Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about one of the most iconic anime series out there, D. Grayman. Now, before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications so you never miss a video. Let's get it. D. Grayman is a Japanese manga series written and illustrated by Katsuro Hoshino. The manga was serialized in Shueisha's Weekly Shonen Jump magazine in 2004 with a total of 27 volumes. The series captivated fans with its unique blend of dark fantasy, supernatural elements, and compelling characters. The D. Grayman anime adaptation was produced by TMS Entertainment and aired on TV Tokyo from October 3rd, 2006 to September 30th, 2008, totaling 103 episodes. It garnered widespread acclaim for its engaging plot and intricate world building. In 2008, Funimation acquired the series for an English language release in North America and reformatted the series into four separate seasons. This move further solidified D. Gray Man's popularity in the Western market, introducing the captivating story of Exorcist and Akuma to a whole new audience. The anime's gripping narrative, intricate world building, and intense battles earned a dedicated fan base worldwide. With its blend of action, mystery, and supernatural elements, D. Gray Man remains an unforgettable and iconic addition to the anime world. So, let's get into the story. Introduction Arc In the world of D. Gray Man, Alan encounters the cursed church and gets entangled in a murder investigation. He uncovers a haunting truth about a possessed brother-in-law, Claire, who is manipulated by the Millennium Earl. Alan battles to free Claire's soul, revealing the existence of Akuma, dark creatures created by the Earl. Later, Alan intervenes in a prank gone wrong, protecting Jan from an Akuma, but Jan's friend Leo falls victim to the Earl's manipulation. After a heart-wrenching confrontation, Alan realizes the Earl's sinister plans and engages in battle. At the Order's HQ, Alan's true destiny is foretold, being the destroyer of time, destined to confront the Millennium Earl once more. Now, as an exorcist, Alan embraces his duty, swearing to keep walking no matter what trials lay ahead, leading us to the Ghost of Matter Arc. After arriving at the Order's HQ, Alan is shown around by Lena Lee Lee. He meets various members and befriends the chef, Jerry, due to his big appetite. However, trouble arises when Conda picks a fight with the Finders and Alan intervenes, earning the nickname Bean Sprout. Assigned his first mission by Kamui, Alan teams up with Kanda and a finder named Toma to find a piece of innocence in Mater, Italy. They find the finder's station under attack by Akuma. In the battle, Kanda secures the innocence, but leaves Alan to deal with a level 2 Akuma alone. Overwhelmed, Alan is rescued by Tim Kempi and intervenes just in time to save Toma from Kanda's attack, who was tricked by an Akuma impersonating Alan. In Mater's sewers, Alan confronts an Akuma named Lala, who pleads for mercy to be with her companion, Gazol. Alan sympathizes and decides to wait for Gazol's death before extracting the innocence from Lala. An argument with Kanda ensues, but they put their differences aside to face the level 2 Akuma together. Alan's anti-Akuma arm transforms into powerful weapons, but he struggles to control them. Kanda steps in to help, and they finally defeat the Akuma. As the innocence is returned to Lala, she reverts to a doll, singing to Gazul's lifeless body. Alan is reminded by Kanda that exorcists are destroyers, not saviors. And tearfully, Alan acknowledges this, but wants to be both. Lala then returns to her true form briefly, thanking Alan before she breaks. Alan retrieves the innocence and returns to HQ, deeply affected by the emotional journey, leading to the third arc, Destruction of the Black Order Attempt Arc. However, this was a mini comedy arc about the antics of the science section. Literally one episode, it don't matter. Skipping ahead in the Rewinding Town arc, Alan and Lena Lee investigate a town stuck in a time loop. They save Miranda and Akuma and discover her clock holds innocence, making her the clock's compatible apostle. After realizing the time loop is caused by Miranda's lack of employment, they try to help her find a job. However, they are captured by Rode Camelot, a human associated with the Noah family, who has ties to the Millennium Earl. During the captivity, Rode injures Alan and reveals her true identity. Alan struggles with the notion of a human siding with Akuma, but can't bring himself to harm Rode. When Rode tries to attack Miranda, Alan protects her, and Miranda activates her innocence to revert their injuries back to normal. 
they manage to defeat Rode and her Akuma, but Rode forces one of the level 2 Akuma to self-destruct to prevent Alan from saving its soul. Alan tries to stop the explosion, but Lena Lee prevents him, leading to a confrontation between them. After the battle, Alan and Lena Lee confront Miranda, who is still using her powers to heal them. They ask her to stop, but Miranda refuses, fearing their injuries will return. Alan reassures her and acknowledges her efforts, convincing her to deactivate her innocence. Miranda complies, and they receive medical care for their return wounds, bringing us to the first anime-only filler arc, the Leaf of Revival sub-arc. Once again, why? We ain't gonna cover no damn filler. On to the General Jaeger Falls arc. After recovering from the Rewinding Town incident, Alan meets fellow exorcists, Lavi and Bookman. Bookman examines Alan's cursed left eye and finds it healing, but not fully functional. Alan becomes uncertain about his role as an exorcist, but Lavi reminds him of their duty to draw Akuma by wearing their exorcist coats. Alan regains his resolve and remembers his promise to Mana. They learned of General Jaeger's death and the importance of the heart, a core piece of innocence that powers the other 108 pieces. The Millennium Earl may be targeting generals to acquire this powerful source. Alan, Lena Lee, Lavi, and Bookman are tasked with finding General Cross, and Alan is disturbed by this assignment, bringing us to the Vampire of the Old Castle arc. After being assigned to find General Cross, Alan experiences nightmares of his past, training with Cross and notices Lena Lee's distance. During a stop in a Romanian village, Alan and Lena Lee have an emotional conversation wherein she encourages him not to shoulder the burden alone. Alan and Lavi stay behind to deal with a vampire threat in the village, suspecting it might be related to Cross. They encounter Baron Arister Crory III, believed to be a vampire, but they discover he is an innocence accommodator and not killing innocent people, but disguised Akuma. Crory decides to become an exorcist and Alan's eye evolves, allowing him to share visions with others. Iliad, an Akuma, attacks them, but Alan's evolved eye protects him. In the battle, Iliad accidentally reveals she had wanted to experience love with Crory, and she is killed by his bite. Crory decides to live on as an exorcist, and they learn that Cross had borrowed money and left for the Far East. Crory sets his castle on fire, signaling a new beginning as an exorcist, bringing us to the second filler arc. More anime only BS. So now, thus begins the Order and Crisis arc. Kamui instructs Alan, Lavi, and Crory to travel together to meet up with Lena Lee and Bookman. During the journey, Alan discovers that his cursed eye has evolved, granting him the ability to detect Akuma within a 300 meter radius and reveal their souls to others. However, he also realizes with concern that his eye is evolving similar to that of an Akuma. Crory is deeply depressed due to the villagers' rejection and lack of understanding. He goes for a tour of the train, but ends up losing all his belongings in a poker game against three strangers, one of whom is a boy named Ease. Alan wanting to help Crory challenges the men to a game and skillfully cheats to win back Crory's possessions and strip the three men down to their underpants. Alan then reveals that he developed these cheating skills to repay Cross's debts and has never lost since, demonstrating a darker side, Black Alan. After the men leave the train, Ease attempts to give Alan a silver button as a token of gratitude, but Kevin Yeager, the bespeckled man in their group, stops him abruptly. It is revealed that the name Kevin Yeager is embossed on the back of the silver button, implying a connection between him and his own murder. Later, Kevin Yeager transforms into Tiki Meek, a Noah, and meets the Millennium Earl. The implication arises that Kevin might be involved in his own murder, leading to suspicions about his true identity and intentions. After their meeting, Tiki Meek returns to the Noah residence with the Earl. The story continues to unfold as Alan, Lavi, and Crory journey to find General Cross and face new challenges and revelations about the mysteries surrounding the Akuma the Noah family, and Innocence, leading to Lulu Bell's attack arc. But wait, it's anime filler. So plot twist, skipping ahead to Suman Dark's fallen arc. After Alan's evolved curse eye fully heals, it becomes easier for him to spot Akuma and fight them. However, his increased fighting has worried his companions, especially as his left arm shows signs of fatigue. The group arrives in China and learns that General Cross may have been killed Alan remains determined to find him though, 
they encounter a colossal white floating torso, a fallen one with Suman Dark, a missing exorcist, embedded in its chest. Lena Lee reveals that Suman was forced to betray the Order to save his daughter, leading to his fall as a fallen one. As Alan tries to save Suman, the exorcist recalls his tragic past and decides to separate from his innocence. After successfully removing it, Suman's body becomes alive, but his mind is gone. Tiki Meek appears and reveals that he is targeting people connected to a certain person, General Cross, and attacks Alan. Tiki inserts a carnivorous butterfly golem into Alan's body, leaving him helpless and severely weakened. Tiki then leaves Alan to die a slow, agonizing death, scattering cards over him as a cruel taunt. Despite Alan's dire situation, he orders Tim Kimpy to escape with Suman's innocence to his comrades. Tiki then unleashes an Akuma wave to pursue Tim Kimpy, leaving Alan to face a grim fate. Alan's despair is interrupted though by Tim Kimpy, who returns with Lena Lee and Lobby to save him. Tiki mocks Alan for being unable to protect anyone and launches a final attack. As Lena Lee and Lobby are caught in the explosion, Alan undergoes a transformation, fusing with his innocence to become a powerful, monstrous being capable of defeating Tiki. In this awakened state, Alan fights back fiercely, forcing Tiki to retreat. Alan's friends, although frightened by his transformation, assure him of their support and acceptance. Alan realizes that he can no longer turn back from the path he's on and vows to get stronger, and the group continues its journey to find General Cross, bringing us to the 12th arc, Edo and Asian Branch arc. After surviving Tiki's attack, Alan finds himself in a mysterious place filled with ruins in his inner consciousness. He hears Lena Lee's cries and is determined to reach her. However, a mysterious shadow blocks his way and he wakes up in an unfamiliar bed. Someone explains that his innocence saved him by closing the wound in his heart, but Alan is consumed by guilt over his failure to save Suman. Bach, the leader of the Black Order's Asian branch, suggests that without his innocence, Alan could live a different life, but Alan refuses driven by his vow to his friends and Mana. Bach reveals that Alan's innocence is not destroyed, but reduced to particles that with training, it might be able to be restored. Alan trains with Four, the guardian deity of the Asian branch, to reactivate his innocence, but struggles to do so. During his training, Alan's frustration grows, but Four encourages him to remember why he fights as an exorcist. Suddenly, a level three Akuma attacks the Asian branch. Alan, powerless without his innocence, tries to help but is stopped by Bach. He eventually convinces Bach to let him fight and declares himself an anti-Akuma weapon, embracing his identity. He reactivates his innocence, manifesting the form Crown Clown, and defeats the Akuma, saving Four and Bach. Alan learns from the Akuma about the situation in Edo and the Noah's Ark device. The Akuma reveals the information willingly, and Alan is puzzled by its honesty. With renewed determination, Alan prepares to travel to Edo using the Noah's Ark to face the challenge that lies ahead, bringing us to the 13th Ark, Noah's Ark. After using the Noah's Ark to reach Edo, Alan saves Lena Lee from the Earl and fights him using his new anti-Akuma weapon, Crown Clown. The fight ends in a draw and Konda mistakes Alan for an Akuma, but is stopped from attacking at the last moment. The emotional reunion with Lena Lee is interrupted when Lero teleports her away and Alan, Lavi, Krori, Chayozi, and Konda are teleported into the Noah's Ark while trying to rescue her. Inside the Ark, they encounter Tiki, who gives them a key to the road's dimensional door. They encounter Jazz Devi, and a battle ensues. Jazz Devi demands Alan to pay Cross's debt, but Alan refuses, leading to a fight. They manage to find the real key and continue through the Ark, encountering Road and Tiki at the top of the tower. Tiki tries to kill Lena Lee, but Alan fights him and his new arm heals itself. During the battle, Alan achieves critical point by exceeding 100% synchronization rate, allowing him to use Crown Clown's Sword of Exorcism. He successfully exorcises the Noah from Tiki, but Road gets revenge by attacking Alan and Lavi, resulting in Tiki becoming a fully awakened Noah and overpowering them. General Cross then arrives to rescue them. Later, Cross orders Alan to control the Ark and sends him and Tim Can Be to the 14th Noah's secret room. Alan faces a dark apparition and plays music on a white piano, controlling and restoring the Ark. They then use the Ark to transport the Akuma Egg to the Black Order headquarters, bringing us to the final Ark, Invasion of the Black Order. 
After successfully controlling the Ark and saving his friends, Alan wonders about the symbols he and Mana created. Realizing they are the key to controlling the Ark, he seeks to confront his master about it, but circumstances prevent him from doing so. Back at headquarters, Alan finds himself under suspicion and supervision by Malcolm C. Laville, who wants to put him on trial for treason. Meanwhile, the Noah, Lulu Bell, launches an attack on the Black Order's Lab 5 to retrieve the Akuma Egg. With the help of Bookman, Alan arrives to face the overwhelming army of level 3 Akuma and Skulls. Lulu Bell succeeds in securing the Akuma Egg, however, and opens a gate to the Millennium Earl. In a daring rescue mission, Alan jumps into the fray to save Miranda, who had been on the egg, and the exorcists unite to destroy the Akuma Egg before it can be fully downloaded. Their triumph is short-lived though, when a level 4 Akuma emerges, posing a severe threat to the headquarters. Alan and Lena Lee, using their new form of dark boots, engage in a fierce battle against the monstrous Akuma. The general joins in, and with their combined efforts, they manage to defeat him. However, the intense battle leaves Alan critically injured and unable to move. Howard Link then comes to his rescue, saving him from being crushed by falling debris and takes him to the medical ward for treatment. With Alan and the others back to safety and the Noah family and the Millennium Earl still lurking in the shadows, Alan vows to one day take down the Millennium Earl for good. And that is the end of the story. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and slap the bell notification icon so you never miss another video. Until next time, 